welcome back to another very special episode of Behind the Lens, presented by Film Hooligans. I'm John, the host, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Jason Alt. Hi, I'm Jason, the co-host, I guess. Can I be Jason, the host, too? Can I just... Can't you say the other host of the show? We will figure out the incidentals later uh, once we have mediation. But until then, we have a very special lineup for you tonight. And that is the filmmaker, the writer-director, Serge Kushner of The Idea of Manhood. Hello? Morning, princess. Guess who? But not just the filmmaker. That's what we usually focus on on this show. We have the two stars also, uh, Jeremy Kushner and Carl Burry. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our very special guest tonight. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Jeremy, Serge, and Carl. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Obviously, I assume that Serge and Jeremy have met before, having the same parents and all. But yeah. how did uh, you all connect with Carl? Um, that was, uh, through a connection of, uh, Jeremy's, right, Jeremy? It was, uh, a, f- a friend of a friend. What was the connection again, Jer? I think we, I think we got hooked up through Saravo. Yeah. Right. Is that right? Saravo, yeah. 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 So a, a friend of ours who's also my, or our Shakespeare go-to guy, um, and, uh, Joe and I worked on a show called Jersey Boys together, and, um, when he found out that we were doing this, he was like, yeah, Carl's the guy. Carl's the guy for sure. Yeah. And then uh, me and Carl had a dinner at uh, Joe Allen's, and I thought, oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we, hit it, we hit it off. He had amazing things to say about the script and great ideas, and I, I knew he was the guy uh, right away. Just from, just, from, just from meeting him and talking about uh, his point of view on – what the story was going to be and who he thought, you know, Sandy was and just his take was, was, uh, spot on. Um, and, and that's, that's how we all kind of hooked up. Cause that, that could be an indictment to, uh, be a very Sandy esque, uh, you know, person, <laughs> right? I, I mean, we decided I was a real life Jacob or Sandy and you were a real life Jacob. We have that dynamic on the show. It, that's great. <laughs> Every time I watch this or like I, I tell someone to watch this, uh, that always becomes the thing. It, it's literally Twilight for like middle aged dudes. You know, are you like, a Miranda or a yeah, Samantha? <laughs> my team, team Sandy? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I am definitely Team Jacob, which I I'm very proud of. You know, uh, but this was not only just the two Kushner brothers, uh, but your brother Bryce as well uh, composed Bryce. the score. Uh, how was that experience working with so much family on this production? <laughs> uh, actually, went. Well, which is saying a lot for our family. Uh, hey. no, the, the three of us work well together. We've actually um, done a few things together. Bryce has scored um, all the films I've made. This is my first feature, uh, but Bryce has scored all the short films I made up to that point. Uh, Jeremy's been uh, in a handful of my short films. I don't know if you've been in all of them. Almost no. all of them. <laughs> no, no, almost all of them. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, we we uh, as much as we bust each other's balls and you know like to make fun and and uh, poke the bear we all end up working really well together which is uh, i guess just weird i think we have a good mutual respect i think that as we've grown up we all started in theater together um and then uh they got smart and started doing um film and music and i was an idiot and stayed in theater um <laughs> mostly because that's where all the money is uh but, oh no, I'm rolling in it now. <laughs> and it's film money, just. Whoo. <laughs> but I think that we all have a good mutual respect for for what each other does, and and uh, I know I I know I think that Serge is you know he's definitely one of the best directors I've worked for, and and Bryce, everything that he does he, as far as Serge's music, Serge's scoring, Serge's movies is always dead on. Serge Serge will send him like a couple of ideas or like it or 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 will give him like. A thought and it'll come back and Serge will play for me. He's like, it's like perfect. It's like yeah. exactly what Bryce, Bryce is. Bryce is really, uh, he's one of those music savant kind of guys. He just uh, has his finger on the pulse and he can really bring an emotion or uh, a feeling uh, to to a character or a scene uh, just just through kind of talking it through and and just his I um, understanding of 
uh, you know, what a certain instrument will sound like or feel like for a, a character or a scene is 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 great. And he's just really great to work with. He's horrible to have as a brother. We we do not <laughs> worst. <laughs> he's the but, worst. Is he the worst. baby or is he the the? No, I'm, the I'm the youngest. Bryce he's the middle. the middle. Yeah. So oh. he's a fucking nightmare. Gotcha. But you didn't think I was the baby of the family? What is what are you trying to say? You look like uh, you look like Hall and Oates roadie right now. <laughs> I mean, that would be my dream job. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad job. How was that like growing up with that much like just creativeness in, in the house? Were you guys like constantly pushing each other? I mean, usually because like you think of a sports team family and they're always you know pushing each other or whatever. But like in a creative family like this. Pushing each other downstairs or into snowbanks. <laughs> no, we, we all, uh, we were kind of, I you know, to interrupt me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, but we all kind of spread out enough that we didn't get in each other's way with competition. We just uh, all ended up in the arts uh, somehow. Um, you know, our parents uh, put us in all of the things, diving and karate and, and all the rest of it. We just ended up being uh, okay at the arts. So that's what we <laughs> stuck stuck with. Uh, but no, we, we, you know, we, we never kind of pushed each other. We never got in each other's way. It wasn't until we, uh, kind of grew up and moved out that we wound up coming back together and, and, and collaborating. Yeah. I think it was when we became, when we, when we became of age, I wouldn't say adults cause I don't think any of us have fully grown up yet, but when we got to a certain age, that's when we all sort of, we realized how lucky we had it. Like we had this like built in, I knew, I, I knew it I, probably the earliest I was like, wait a minute. So my brother doesn't want to act anymore, and he's writing and directing. Oh man, I got to make this guy my friend again. <laughs> this is this this is going to work out to my advantage, hopefully. And I don't have to pay him. There you go. <laughs> and, and right before they started shooting, they're just like, "Carl, you're an honorary member of the family, so you <laughs> get the same pay as uh, Jeremy, right?" <laughs> I mean. And it's so much money from this. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was half the budget. I'm rich. Yeah. I mean, you you joke, but Carl really like when when we started this because Carl and I knew each other a little bit, but when we started working, it was sort of like fresh. It was like we were getting to know each other. But as soon as we started working on it, I was like, oh my god, there's no one that is, no one other than Serge playing this part himself could get this character better. Yeah. Um, Carl is Carl knows this Carl knows this guy inside and out. He was like he killed it coming in. Um, I felt instantly comfortable, and I felt like I instantly was like, oh yeah, this is a brother. This is absolutely a brother. Yeah, and as much as you know, we we uh, we poke and make fun and and all the rest of it. Uh, like I said, we do work really well together. But Carl was uh, not only great at collaborating, and working well with us, but he was also really good at also poking fun and and playing that you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that brother kind of vibe in the mix, so it, it, it was a, it was a fantastic, uh, lucky uh, fit for all of us. I, I mean, it came off as comfortable, and I know it was an intimate, you know, uh, cast size and crew size, but it definitely felt like there was a real camaraderie on on screen, and that translated to the performances. Um, but Serge, writing comedy seems to be your wheelhouse or, or what you're kind of comfortable with. Um, this film was very tonally different from another comedy you wrote in Holiday Heist. Um, did you find this project more satisfying to work on? <laughs> oh, I hate that you brought up Holiday Heist. Oh, that was the worst thing that's ever been made. And let me It's not even that. Chris Kattan's worst movie. Oh, Take it, it easy on yourself. <laughs> it's like the the fourth or fifth worst oh Chris Kattan God. movie. That movie oh. is going to be the scar on my face for my entire career. No, it was uh, you as you if you look on IMDb, you can see that it says original screenplay by. There was nothing on that screen that I wrote. Uh, it was a, 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 you know a stepping stone, a learning. Oh, uh, like if you got a paycheck from it, like who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> but no, it's it's the it's the most offensive Christmas movie that's ever been made. <laughs> wow, really? don't don't even try to get through it. But it it airs on the Ion Network every uh, Christmas. Oh, all right. I'll have to re up my subscription. What initially uh, was the uh, pun intended? The idea behind the idea of manhood. Sure. Um, so it initially kind of came from me just you know uh, banging my head against the wall with uh, making short after short for for no money and ha having written for I've been writing for about twenty years now, but having you know written 
five, six, seven feature films that I just was sending out and trying to, you know, have happen. And, you know, Holiday Heist, of course, was the giant hit that it was. And nothing. Uh, but no, I, I couldn't I couldn't catch a break. So I just was just sick of, you know, writing these scripts and not being able to sell them or be able to get people involved. So I thought, well, write something. You know, I did the Robert Rodriguez thing uh, where you you write something with what the what you have at your disposal. So I knew that I had a place in New York that we could shoot at for free. I knew that my brother would be in the movie for free. My other brother would score it. Uh, I knew if I wrote it over the course of one day that everybody could just wear the same clothes for the entire movie. And uh, I knew that if I made it just a really minimal cast, that there's a potential with all the actor friends that we had that I could get these people on board. So I thought, well, just fucking do that. Write something small and concise. Uh, and as I started working on it, just brainstorming ideas, this this idea uh, uh, kind of came out of uh, past experiences and ideas and, and thoughts on, on relationships and, and friendships and brotherhood. Uh, and I kind of just... Um, puked it out uh, in about three weeks. It was, it was one of the fastest things I ever wrote just because I wanted to do something. I wanted to shoot something. I wanted to direct something. And as I was passing it out to uh, my small group of friends that um, read my my stuff and give me feedback, my writer friends and, and other uh, acquaintances, uh, all the feedback was that it was great. People were really excited about it. And I thought, well, it's not going to be impossible to, to shoot this. So uh, I spoke with Jaren. We tried to figure out, like, well, maybe we could do it for, like, $5,000 if we could find, like, a camera. We could, And as I started building the the team with um, my my very good friend, Melanie Murkowski, who helped me uh, produce this, um, it, I, we couldn't have done this without Mal. She was a, a linchpin for sure. Um, as we started to build it and bring more people on, all of a sudden um, – you know, more people started volunteering things like um, uh, there's a, a bar close to our place called Harlem Public. And and uh, I frequent that place. That's actually where I wrote most of the movie uh, up in Harlem. And, uh, you know, talking with them, they said, oh, you're going to try to make a movie. We can, what can we do to help? And they wound up giving us like three or four full meals for our 14 casting crew. Uh, you know, they uh, I think they donated. We did a, a Kickstarter for post-production funds and they wound up giving some money. So as soon as I could show, uh, you know, other angel investors that I had uh, things happening, the snowball just kept on rolling and getting bigger and bigger. And uh, it happened, you know. Um, so the the reason for writing it was to make a movie but it wound up being something that i was really proud of and something that meant a lot uh to me personally that's amazing uh it's yeah it's impossible to make a movie but once you the the train kind of starts going and building momentum in a good way it's it's yeah. probably the best feeling in the world i literally set a date i told jeremy we're gonna start shooting it on this date and uh, come hell or high water uh which wound up being a later date because uh, he ended up booking a job on Broadway. So we had to push it. Uh, but, but by that point, you know, things just started happening. And as soon as you have, you know, people behind you and a little bit of money in the bank from people, you know, helping you out, then it just starts to happen. You know, if, uh, if you will it, it's, there's, there's potential. It's hell. I don't <laughs> recommend it to anybody. It was a lot, a lot of work and some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life. Uh, but, you know, I, I have a movie out of it. The next question is more about just kind of the contents of the movie. It's so incredibly well done capturing the ups and like the tumultuous moments of just being committed to someone else, especially when there's children involved, which is why it's just so goddamn relatable. Uh, it portrays someone at the, and it also portrays someone at the opposite end of that spectrum, someone that's in the middle of like an existential and professional crisis. Uh, that's having a hard time making human connections. Like again, super relatable. What was it about having like balancing these two very different characters trajectories? that really like and have them collide really spoke to you in those those specific moments that they're they're experiencing and that and i kind of want to you know get your thoughts and then also uh jeremy's and uh carl's as far as playing those parts go sure uh i mean a lot of it was personal things that had happened to me uh in my life uh as far as um, I, you know, I, I don't have kids and, and I don't really have any um, uh, desire to have kids. Uh, Jeremy does have kids. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, talking about that and going through that and seeing seeing uh, what it's like to, to be a family man and, and have 
the ups and downs of that and those experiences and then being someone like Sandy ish that has no desire to go that route. I just like the, the similarities of, of what their plights are, but also the juxtaposition of, of, of the two of them. And I thought that was just such an interesting um, conversation that you don't necessarily see between two men on screen. Uh, you, you know, there's the, my dinner with Andre, which is kind of a, a, a thing that people always uh, refer to with this movie as far as the conversation, but you don't see two guys talking about, emotions um relationships and you know their 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 deep uh you know deep wants and deep problems and and deep issues uh in this way so much as like you know typically they're talking about a specific girl or you know it just gets kind of trite or for, for me i i i hadn't seen two guys going through middle age talk about uh how hard it was uh, in this way before in a film. And I thought that would just be an interesting way uh, to, uh, uh, interesting thing to explore. Well, I think it worked in the film because like you had to break them down for almost the entire movie before they could open up about anything that was real without sarcasm or, you know, sure. yeah, ironic that's it. deflection. I mean, exactly. There's, there's a big problem in, in, in my life, uh, especially with my brothers that uh, we just divert to sarcasm. And so to, to finally get them to a place where they're being honest with themselves and honest with each other, uh, I thought would be an interesting uh, way to make a film. I know that you know there's the three act structure that you're supposed to stick to with with storytelling, and there, there's there's a you know a bit of this going on. But I thought it would be really interesting for it just to build and get to a place where they finally have their their uh, you know climax of of you know really showing how they really feel about each other and and how they feel about themselves. I think you had those Trojan horse scenes too, because there is a lot of sarcasm, especially coming from Sandy. He has there. There's you know quite a bit of dick and fart jokes, or you know balls sticking to your leg jokes uh, <laughs> that that he delivers. Did you put that in there because you knew there was going to be like as a Trojan horse uh, to kind of soften that like huge steep of uh, emotional gravitas? Or I'm, I guess uh, maybe subconsciously I did that. I. I... What Carl brought to that performance and that character, I think, really helped my writing, uh, to be honest. I, I I think that's just the way that I talk with my friends or with my brother or, or whoever. Um, and, and I think Carl uh, picked out the nuance, and I think you can see it in his performance throughout, that, that he's hiding behind his own eyes, and you can actually see him come out uh, in the end and and tell his truth uh, in, in those final scenes. So I owe a lot of that to, to Carl's performance and Jeremy's performance. Building on that as far as uh, portraying these characters from, from Jeremy and Carl, um, they have a huge breadth of emotions. Um, did you find it kind of difficult or challenging to balance the tones? Carl? Uh, no. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, oh. You're right. That was a bad question. Right. <laughs> no, it wasn't a bad. Hey, question. fellas, is acting hard? <laughs> what, what, what? It was a shitty answer. Is what it was. Because <laughs> I asked the acting coach. Yeah. You're such a Sandy. I know. Well, the, the, the interesting thing about that, uh, and what Serge just said, kind of brilliantly, is is, and I never really thought about. It that and it's really bang on is hiding behind the eyes I've, I've really never really heard that and that's it's finding a way i think sandy was finding a way to have this conversation he he, he might have known that he wanted to have the conversation but not quite know how to begin it or or continue it and because he uh, the, the the thrust of it that that sandy knew he wanted to go there wanted to speak to jacob but once he got there it was kind of like rough waters not 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 that it was yeah it was difficult but he the connection was more important than the difficulty and i think that uh was in the writing that really supported um my performance i mean you know an actor is not any good with shitty material so really a testament to the writing thanks man jeremy did, did you feel like uh your brother kind of wrote jacob with you in mind being the the brother with the family, did, did you consciously oh. give them your initials? No. Oh. 
<laughs> no shit. No, I, I just, I don't know. I, I always tend to uh, skew towards the Jewish names when I write scripts. I love the name Sandy, and uh, oh. just, I don't know why it ever happened that way. Felon, fellow chosen people. All right, I'm in good company. There you go. Well, we're we're not, but that I feel oh. that way. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're Take still a mensch. Yeah. <laughs> if it makes you, if it makes you feel better, we only date Jews. Okay, good. <laughs> well, then I'm still in the running. Perfect. You've been granted honorary status <laughs> by John for the rest of the interview. <laughs> Perfect. Bless you can you do the voice God. one time. Right. Yeah. That's our that's our quota. Um, um, no, I think. When Serge, I remember read. I remember exactly where I was when Serge sent me the script to read. I remember. I I, I remember exactly how I felt. Um, and the first thing I felt was, "Oh shit, dude! I, why didn't you tell me that you felt like this?" And he's like, "No, no, it's not that deep. It's like I know that I know that there's a lot of similarities. But I literally, when I read it the first time, I I felt such a connection to this." To this, to these characters, that I that I was like, oh, Serge is like trying to tell me something, um, and in a way, I think he was. But in in a way, also, it was just I'll never tell. <laughs> Serge is really good at like he, you know, I, I think all uh, artists are really good if they can sort of without without apology sort of draw from their from what they have and and just sort of put it out there. Um, and I think that that's in a lot of ways what Serge does. And I'm lucky enough to have to be close to him in that way. And we have a, this sort of Sandy Jacob relationship anyway. Um, so it was it really did feel sort of like a no brainer. Like I was I was full Tom Hanks in the role. You know, it's like I, I just sort of walked out and was me. Um, and was me probably about five years or six years prior to the me that was actually acting the role. Because I went through a lot of this stuff myself, so uh, you know, without too many spoiler alerts, it was the hardest thing I had playing this role was actually not hitting that the peak too early. You know, you know, not peaking too early because I knew I knew exactly who these guys were. I knew how we felt. I knew that if Serge and I had this conversation when you know when earlier in my relationship my relationship would have been different you know it, it was a real sort of cathartic thing for me um and then also having it be my brother's baby like having his baby be the thing that i'm you know delivering also made it extra you know just like kind of the cherry on it where i, I got to live this thing through him and a testament to Jeremy's performance. I mean, uh, he like he, he said that he walked into it and it was just him. I I would disagree. I you know I wrote it that way, but Jeremy brought such a different vibe and feel to it uh, that you know when you're making you're making a film and this is my first feature and I'd made shorts before, but you never know what the actor is going to bring on the day, mm. and so stepping into it, it's almost one of those things where you know. You you meet somebody that you hate, and then all of a sudden they're your best friend two years later. You know what I mean? So on the first day, I was like, oh, I don't know. This feels weird. He's doing something, or Carl's doing something. And all of a sudden, as we kind of – everybody, the cast and crew got more comfortable, and we got into it, and the day two started happening – it just felt right, and the character was different from from how I imagined. And it wasn't Jeremy; it was Jacob, and he had brought something different to it. And Sandy wasn't me; it was it was it was a it was a different person altogether. But they were saying the words in a way that rang true to them and rang true to the story, but wasn't how I envisioned it. And I I couldn't have gotten luckier. Hmm. Was there a lot of imp uh, improvisation, or is it all pretty? Close oh god, no! Serge, Serge got Serge like Serge wheels a whip. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't allow, I don't allow that on my set. <laughs> nice. I didn't feel like we needed to. I didn't feel yeah. like there was something missing. Like, ooh, I really want to twist it this way or add this. It was like, no, that's that's pretty it. That's yeah, pretty think, much it. I think the biggest thing we learned through doing because you know it's one thing making a, a short because it doesn't matter how long it is but making a feature the one thing we learned about Serge's dialogue is that it's so mammity mm -hmm. that you know a normal 
one page script, you know, a normal one page is, a, you know, like a minute worth of dialogue with Surge, we would be Carl and I would be hitting these this dialogue and be like, oh, crap, we're going to run it like we're, we're going to have to fill this with a lot of like chase scenes or something because <laughs> because it's Surge just writes this amazing sort of and it feels like and like what Carl is saying, sort of feeding off of that, it feels like dialogue. It doesn't feel it sort of doesn't feel like dialogue. It feels like conversation. Um, it never feels like you're being sort of forced into saying something that doesn't feel right in your mouth. It never feels like you're, you never stumble on things because it feels like the way that people talk. Well, that's why, that's why we asked. It felt so natural that yeah, like, I mean, it didn't feel like you were reciting lines. So we thought maybe he kind of sat you down and was like, talk about this, but no, no I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised to, to hear that was all hundred percent scripted. For sure. That's just, yeah. that's just great writing. That's all. Well, they is. also they also really had it in their body. I was lucky enough to get sorry if you hear my Canadian accent. I've been living uh, up in Ontario for the last <laughs> eight months. Every <laughs> once in a while you hear an about. Uh, but no, they, they really had it in their bodies as far as uh, we, we got lucky with the rehearsal process prior to shooting. I knew that we only had uh, the 14 days allotted to shoot this thing. Uh, so I, I wanted to make sure that everybody felt as comfortable and at ease with uh, their dialogue as possible. Uh, so we we rehearsed for over the course of three weeks, probably 10, 12, 13 days. So they, they really, they had everything down, so we were ready to go on the day. And that's interesting because I think in our review we, we mentioned that this is like a pure, like people talking in rooms, kind of a subgenre drama. And those are really tough to execute because you have to make it, you have to make sure that people are so invested in just watching two or, you know, three people carry on a conversation and be entertained. So to hear you guys say that you actively kind of knew that or, you know, or kept that in mind, it's like, ah, oh, were you like, Okay, was it more in like the editing room where like we we got to add some a little bit of insert shots because it wasn't like an insert shot happy movie or anything. There was a little bit of of variety in in the camera work, but it was really you really just let the film be about this conversation and what these two these two gentlemen were were saying. Thank you. Uh, I mean that was. Uh, a bit of an accident as far and and planned as far as you know. I like Jeremy said. I'm I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to my dialogue and 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 uh, and how I want that uh, performed. But uh, when once I get into the editing room, uh, I, I I cut this thing myself. I kind of throw that all away and, and I become a different person. Um, and I just kind of got uh, lucky in 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 the way that it it turned out that way. You know, it, as an editor, I was I was looking at the the cuts and just being like, oh shit, I wish we had more air between here or I wish we had some sky shots or something that I could pad this out or move this around but I just didn't have it it was so lean going into the cutting room mm -hmm. that I just cut it as as I kind of saw it um and you know was nervous at the at the length but then after everything was said and done it, you know it's only 73 minutes it felt right you know I started showing it uh in early cuts and I I, I didn't want to add anything else. I didn't. I didn't think it needed another scene or another, you know, insert. I, I just felt like this is this is what it is. And you know, this day and age, as as far as storytelling is concerned, I don't think you need to write the uh, 120 page script. I don't think it has to be the 30 minute, you know, uh, television show. I think you write the story how you see it, and whatever the page count is, it's going to find its own place if it's right. If the story's there completely. Sure. To me, it felt like the whole movie, Sandy was trying to just chase everyone out of the house and just be able to, to totally. talk to Jacob himself. Yeah. So, like, I think if it had gone in any longer, when you finally got that, you know, the money shot, the last scene, it, it kind of would have, I don't know, it, it, it might have just felt a little overlong, maybe. So I, I thought it was good being nice and lean, and I think it served the story well when really you have Sandy kind of being like more of a dick than usual just to try to run people off so totally totally yeah i, I watching it the second time i, I really got a sense of that cool. wow I, I think the length worked and it's funny too because you know the the fear that it's it's not your typical hollywood or independent film length film uh anytime i, I brought up the length to someone that had seen it they'd go oh i didn't i didn't notice that it was short at all i thought it was just a, a regular move so it's it's uh 
it, I'm I'm happy how it turned out. As I guess. What I'm yeah, saying. it's paced perfectly. There's not an ounce I, of fat. Yeah. I think people judge it based on the amount of stuff that happened and not like the number of minutes that tech by. So it kind of felt like everything that happens in a movie happened. How many, I have to ask, how many times have you pulled the uh, Kevin McAllister trick at a party? <laughs> uh, I used to do that quite a bit uh, <laughs> it, when I had more balls and more interest in actually going out to, to bars uh, in my 20s. But uh, I don't know, probably a half a dozen times. Nice. Every every time I do it now, because I'm totally going to ape that trick, I'll, I'll at you on Twitter to let you know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, like Search has a couple of those games, though. Like, I feel like that's not the only one. Yeah, I got. I have a few. I have a few uh, annoying uh, social games that I play on people without them knowing. <laughs> well, I'll look forward to your next feature. Yeah. When, when you sort of write that in there. I'm an asshole. <laughs> so we we talked a lot about you as a writer but like as a director someone who had done some shorts before but this was your first feature um there had to be some challenges associated with shooting on such a small set right like that house was big for new york but it seemed pretty small to try and get like decent sound and lighting done did you come up with any like creative ways to solve problems that arose just just by being constrained by the setting absolutely um First of all, I have to give a, a big shout out to uh, my cinematographer. He he was such a mensch uh, through this whole process. I mean, I found him on, for all you independent filmmakers out there, uh, I found him on a site, I don't know if it's still, it might be different now, mandy.com. Uh, and he he was one of the, the first uh, people we interviewed for the job, one of the only people that was willing to you know, jump on board this crazy shooting schedule for a very minimal pay. Uh, <laughs> and he just, he gave so much of, of his time uh, before we, we wound up shooting, uh, just coming over to the, the house is actually where uh, our, our family, uh, well, Jeremy lives now in, in Harlem. So it's a family house. So we had access to it obviously before the shoot. And so he would come over and we would just, talk through angles and, and talk through, uh, you know, how we wanted it shot. The fact that we couldn't afford a dolly, we couldn't afford a steady cam, uh, played into everything being on sticks, but that wound up being, uh, something that, you know, uh, ended up being a, a great storytelling, um, tool. You, I, I really felt like the whole movie was, uh, two guys playing chess. So the idea of it being segmented and squared off and them feeling like they're on a chessboard, uh, I felt lended to to what the story was and, and, and how these guys were reacting to each other. And that was a that was a big uh, John, uh, my DP's influence. Um, so finding, you know, ways of, of making this one room or one apartment uh, look different uh, was was Big, big, big help from from him. As far as sound was concerned, uh, on the day sound was rough. Uh, I mean, our our guy Aaron uh, was holding his own boom and and you know and 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 mixing everything on on the spot. Everybody had labs on, but it was hard because in July and August in a backyard in New York, you hear a thousand air conditioners and you know <laughs> car like it was a fucking shit show. Helicopter budget is huge on this film. <laughs> and so when we got into the when we got into post for sound, I thought, well, that was fun, so we should just throw this movie in the garbage. But then I met a wonderful woman named Ch uh, uh, Chandra Bulacan, who uh, was our post um, sound engineer, and she saved us. She was just a wizard at uh, at mixing out the background noises. And, you know, initially I thought we had to ADR the whole thing. And we did. We went in and we ADR'd basically 90% of the movie. Wow. And it sounded like a terrible Korean dubbed, like, <laughs> shit show. I was like, well, this is, like, what a waste of everybody's time. And so I went in. A good friend of mine has a – has a um, uh, a studio in in New York, and he said, "Well, bring it in, and and let's see if we can kind of mix it and, and clean it up." And he had uh, Chandra was working there, and and she was uh, unfortunately put on this project because my friend made her do it. Uh, and she was like, "Oh, I don't know if I can. This ADR sounds like garbage. Can I hear the original audio?" I was like, "Okay, but there's nothing we can do with it." And she went, boop, 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 and it sounded amazing. 
So she saved the day. She saved the the the, the film as far as audio was concerned. Um, and then you know other things like the backyard, for instance. Um, the there was direct sun in that backyard, and I knew that it was our back backyard, so I had full control. So what I did was uh, I I built a twenty by twenty silk uh, myself. I went down to Chinatown, and uh, there was this. Um, a material shop that was going out of business and I bought a giant roll of uh, silk material that I thought would work as a diffuser and then I went to the dry cleaner down the street asked them if they'd sew it together uh, and then I hung it in the backyard and that was our silk and that diffused the light and it made it look awesome uh, it sucked because I had to get up at 4 30 every morning myself and uh, hang it before everybody showed up and then take it down at the end of the night myself before I went to bed. So it was, it was a hard two weeks, but you know, we, we found a way to make it all happen in that tiny space and on that tiny budget. It also created a bit of an easy bake oven in the backyard oh, oh God. In, in August. So awful. Yeah. That, that is fucking crazy to me to hear about the sound because I think in our review, we said that it sounded like it's like ASMR level. If you're sitting in, if your eardrums are sitting in a massage chair, like so Carl nice and Jeremy sound so good. Like I tell everyone to like, listen to this with headphones on because yeah. it just sounds so clean and so crisp. It's, that just blows my mind that uh, we thought you might have pulled off some wizardry on set. So to hear that somebody did a lot of that in post is uh that's crazy. Yeah. She's like a wizard. Actually, she commented, I think, on your on the on the uh, yeah okay. Yeah. And she is truly. She's not only like a cool, awesome chick. She's for sure a wizard. For sure a wizard. Oh yeah, genius. I, I again, we like. I literally have the entire movie ADR'd somewhere on a hard drive that it just sounded like you know a bad kung fu. Movie. I kind of want to see that. That would be that. a great optional yeah. audio track for yeah. the DVD, like they did like yeah. Hercules in New York or something like that. Yeah, not a bad idea. <laughs> well, the other day I was watching The Ma- Mandalorian and I was like, oh shit, that's Thomas E. Sullivan uh, oh, from yeah. The Idea of Manhood. And, uh, you know, this this film is very much uh, about the Sandy and Jacob character and you guys did an incredible job. Um, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about the other actors that were in here, like Elizabeth uh, Masucci? I don't want to butcher her name, and Meg McCrossin, as well as Thomas E. Sullivan. Yeah, uh, you know, I I got lucky once again uh, when I cast uh, a young Carl Beery uh, to play the role of Sandy because he also is an acting coach and has Ooh. phenomenal students. <laughs> and I said, do you know any actresses or actors that would do this movie for us? And uh, lo and behold, uh, Carl did. Yeah, Carl basically cast the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to recast my role, but luckily I was related to Serge. So. <laughs> Could I bring somebody I have some chemistry in with? Or is, is this a nepotism thing? <laughs> well, I, I mean, not, not, to, not to spill the beans, but Carl is married to uh, Megan uh, in okay. real life. Perfect. But they, they, they were, you guys weren't married at that point. They were not married right? then. No. Oh. No. Was it, not, was it? But that had nothing to do with with uh, their acting ability. You know, Megan and and Liz both were so. I mean, they, they don't have a lot to do in the film. It's not like you said. It's not about the other characters. That, but they're not superfluous. They were. You know, they're there no. for a reason. Yeah. And they just brought so much. I mean, you know, poor Megan is sitting there through that through that ping pong scene, not Ooh. saying anything, just slowly getting drunk in her own character and i'm not even really paying attention as much as i'm doing a thousand other jobs and then it got to her moment when she woke up from passed out and was too drunk and she made me piss my pants she just brought something so funny to those lines that i just wasn't prepared for i was like oh i am the luckiest guy in the world to get this caliber of acting for such a a a little role that i'm like thank you god for for megan but thank god for carl for introducing me to both liz and megan she was hilarious yeah. like she yeah. had some yeah. really good lines and like you said a lot of her comedy was just her reacting or taking in what was going on around her which is also super you know it's not easy to do you know to no. to kind of react properly uh to that totally. and, and carl you have been teaching people that, that have been cast on the boys and and like the walking dead and stuff so it seems like you have quite a roster of uh, of actors in your stable. You know, I got really, really lucky. I fell into teaching. I was an understudy on Broadway. The person that I helped um, get ready, it was a small 
a group. It was Frank Langella, Ray Liotta, and then this actress. And she credited me for getting her ready. And she said, I teach an acting class. Um, I think you would really help them from a professional actor's standpoint between the two of us. And we worked really well together. And, and that's, I did it for fun because I was on, I was on Brotherhood at the time. And then it just kind of, the ball started rolling and that's my part-time job that kind of worked out. So, uh, Jeremy, you have all this theater experience and you've been doing a lot of TV also. So was it nice to kind of jump in into the, uh, back into like the feature film realm? Oh my, yeah. I mean, look, it, wait, I, yes, yes. Uh, you know, so when, first of all, I'm a fan of Serge's, so I, to get to work on his stuff is great. But just to get, yeah, just to be in that that room, it's such a different room from doing theater. And it's so great to um, to have that kind of opportunity to, to, you know, to play a role like this with Carl, with, a, with an actor of Carl's depth and breadth, 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 breadth. That works. I had... <laughs> you got <laughs> four grown men is all say breath at the same time. That was John awesome. said breath. breath earlier. He's he's the one that messed you up. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, to, to, but to get to do that is yeah. You don't turn. Yeah, I was very excited. Very excited to do it. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It's it's yeah. Feel real lucky. I, w- I want to talk real quick about a, a certain scene, and and I won't do. You know, this is going to be pretty spoiler free. But the back and forth. I'm going to call it the vodka scene. Uh, I noticed that the camera placement uh, sometimes frames Jacob and Sandy kind of in the corner in the bottom with a lot of space around them. Uh, it it's happens a little bit uh, on their back and forth while they're outside kind of perusing around the neighborhood as well. But mostly this it was super predominant in this one scene. Was this uh, like a visual storytelling choice? Were you like signaling something here or was it just? Yeah, uh, again, for me, that was uh, uh, throughout the entire thing. When we were, I was talking with John, our DP, we were, we were just discussing the, the whole chess uh, um, metaphor. And uh, I thought, in, you know, in a chess match, they're, they're head-to-head, they're face-to-face throughout the entire match. And uh, in our shots, everything is clean from, from uh, the beginning up until that point, uh, meaning there's no over-the-shoulder shot. So every, every shot is uh, just like this. There's, there's nothing, you don't see the backs of anybody's heads. Uh, and as they're getting further and further into this discussion, again, no spoilers, um, you know, you see them moving around smaller head, bigger head, chest moves in in, in the shot. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as there's a resolve uh, from one of the characters as far as uh, seeing the other one's point of view or finally, finally uh, you know, breaking through the ice as far as their own issues are concerned it opens up and that's the first time uh, the shot's dirty you see the shot from from behind the other character so you're, you're seeing their their side of things a little bit more and so that that was that was what we were trying to do as far as being an ostentatious annoying uh, filmmaker discussing <laughs> the shot. <laughs> it was like th- as yeah. much as like some people think saying stuff like that sounds pretentious like you do actually I think it makes an impact when you sort of cue the audience and they might not recognize it consciously, but I, I think like if you're taking the time to, to cue the audience a little bit, that something had a little bit more impact. I think that matters. So like, I, I can understand it might be like a little embarrassing to be like, ah, this is why I did it. But like at the same right. time, like we're glad you did though. Cool. Well, I mean, it's always nice to, to, to know that it, it's worked for someone out there, if not if not anybody, but you know, or some some people. Well, Jason and I are big film nerds, right? This is what we do. So it was like, you know, I'm I like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I, I think that he's trying to tell us, or you know, set up the shot, kind of like how you explain. But I liked uh, talking to some other, you know, other friends of mine that that aren't as like in depth in film and everything and that scene particular really stood out to them as well and uh cool. they're just like yeah it, it, it's definitely a noticeable shift and like you said everything's super clean and then those those kind of uh big spaces around them where they feel lost in that particular yeah. framing yeah. and the dirty shot is, is that's exactly right I, you, you said it right they're, they're they're supposed to feel lost in those moments where they're small in in the big empty space they're they're searching for their own thoughts and in, in those that's that was the idea they were, they were searching for what uh, they they they're they searching for their own 
answers, uh, but not looking not looking to each other for them, and then and then eventually it gets a little bit more intimate, and, and you know, anyways. As that they, was, just, you could the, tell all the yeah. empty space around me. That's I'm constantly trying to look for my own thoughts and yeah. act like I know what I'm doing here. No, right. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like Jacob spent two thirds of the movie kind of lying to himself, and and Sandy shows up who had the benefit of like having his own illusions about his own lifestyle shattered independently, and so he like kind of brought that wisdom to his like, well, you know, I I sort of had a, a wake up call, and here's yours. So I, I really thought it was interesting that. Like once you started to see Jacob broken down a little bit, uh, the way you some of the angles changed. Uh, mm-hmm. th- I thought that was really impactful. Cool, thank you. And this, like you said, this was a, a pretty crazy, pay, like breakneck pace of fourteen days of shooting. Fourteen days is nuts. That's in- yeah. insane. Crazy. But uh, any crazy or like funny moments from the like behind the scenes that you could think of that <sighs> that kind of stuck I out. Have one. One, my favorite moment is the fact that we had one crew member, and if if we shot this as a documentary, this would, like, I see Spinal Tap in the background, this would definitely yeah. be like an Easter egg that we, you wouldn't really follow, but every day there was this one grip that would quit. We had a different grip every single day of the oh, shooting. <laughs> and we we couldn't what, figure out, like, what was the reason, like, why, like, we couldn't really figure out, like, what was it that, what, like, about the specific... Yeah, part of the set that he just was like, I just can't, like, I'm not coming back. Yeah, there was after I think it, I don't know if it was day one or day two, but I got a call as I'm going through the dailies of that day on my own in the basement of the house that we're shooting in on my Macintosh. Uh, I get a, I know I got a text message from from this guy, and he at 11:50, and we we're about to shoot the next morning. I think probably six in the morning, and he said, Ah, uh, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> 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 just so calling out I had today. to yeah. I had to and thank God I mean Jesus. my crew these 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 people were so so nice and so Agreed. hardworking and kind and I just sent a text out or an email out to everybody on the cast and crew and and one of our crew members was like oh, I think I got someone and 20 minutes later they're like yeah he's going to show up don't worry it'll be fine and someone else showed up and they did the it was just I it was hell it was terrifying but I got really lucky with with uh, you know Fucking independent filmmakers, man. Those those people will make it happen. Do you know how how many NYU film students all got partial credit for doing a day on your movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody was paid. I paid everybody. <laughs> this was a this was a, a, a SAG union film. <laughs> it was it was. We alluded to it earlier with us talking about like maybe other drinking games you like to play, but um Serge, do you have anything in the works? Like Script wise or drinking game wise? Uh, I mean, we both. can start I mean, one of those right now. Well, I, I kind of just uh, I thought about the tone of this film and how it's like a little bit different from some of the other stuff you did. Are are you looking to do something tonally similar next, or um, or, or maybe like I'm, depart yeah, a little bit? I I kind of am departing a little bit. Uh, I I'm I, I can't say too too much about it, but I I uh, prior to this crazy pandemic, I decided I was going to try to write uh, an animated. Uh, script and and i wanted to you know delve into tv so i wrote this animated um adult uh, uh pilot uh about a year and a half ago uh and started sending it out to, to friends uh, of mine and uh, a good buddy of mine who's uh, works in that that world uh doing doing voice work uh i sent it to him just to be like hey man does is this look like an animated script does this look like things that you work on and he wrote back you know, 20 minutes later that he wanted to produce it and he wanted to make it happen. Uh, and so since then, uh, we've, the ball has, has been rolling and the snowball is getting bigger and, and we're getting closer and closer to potentially having, having that be a, a real thing. So I've been working on that the last year, just writing, uh, more scripts and, uh, you know, show Bibles and, and, you know, getting, um, uh, animation production company on board to, to do the artwork and finding actors. So that's kind of been, uh, kind of been my, my primary focus, uh, the last year, um, I, I have written a couple of other independent uh, films that I would love to make uh, at some point if, if you know, 
other things take off for me and I have a little bit more clout that I could potentially make something where I'm not hanging the silk uh, myself, <laughs> then that would be uh, that would be awesome. Uh, and I also wrote, a, just on a whim, I wrote a weird uh, Christmas movie <laughs> that I thought would be uh, fun to sell in it. Not a holiday heist, too. <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 a, it's a, a good... I had my fingers crossed. I'm like, I hope it's holiday heist, too. <laughs> but those are, I think those Horatio are Sands is available. Could we get him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'm always I'm always working on something different. I, I've you know I've written a couple plays over the past uh, year year or two. Jeremy directed a play I wrote uh, a couple years ago called Our Son uh, that was in a festival in New York uh, that I'm really proud of. Um, you know, and just constantly trying to move forward, keep writing, keep developing, and uh, you know. Uh, like I said, I've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, I still have yet to make a dollar, uh, but I you know. I hate writing. It's awful, but I love having written something. So I'm yeah. I'm gonna continue to to do that. Yeah, yeah. That that's kind of how anybody who does any writing feels about the process. <laughs> I hate writing, but I love having written. Yeah, it's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> well, gentlemen, we quite like this film, as you could uh, surmise uh, from tonight and from the the review that we did. Uh, which we we're extremely fortunate for from uh, uh, Jeremy Andorfer from Vangelis Films. He contacted us and uh, let us do the screening on this one. Um, everyone I've shown, like I said, this film to have like real visceral connections. Um, I, having watched this multiple times, I just have to say, how dare you make me feel things? But <laughs> congratulations for writing. Uh, congratulations to Serge for just writing such a real and raw script. And thank you so much for the wonderful and honest performances from uh, Jeremy and Carl. Like Jason said, it's like sometimes we don't know, you know, what we're going to see uh, when we get offered movies. And mm -hmm. uh, when when this is like lightning struck in a bottle and we were just like super pleased about this and oh, thanks, e even guys. more pleased that you guys agree to do this. So, uh, yeah. thank you. Oh, our Carl, I think this was your best work where you had all your limbs. <laughs> 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 deep so, cut uh, i'm an amputee in this movie too it's just dude, yeah i have all yeah, it's just emotional yeah. Yeah. Te technology yeah. is uh really caught up yeah not to not to promote but if anybody wants to find this film it's on a bunch of streaming platforms you can find it on uh amazon prime it's on tubi it's on uh youtube red it's it's all over the place i just showed out my window like i, I have a tv that's set up in <laughs> yeah, my window it's been screening just... on our on our roof in harlem for the last <laughs> four years so don't it's make the mistake time. i made i i was looking for it on youtube red i went to a site called red tube and typed in manhood don't do that oh, no, 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 yeah, that's no, no, different no. that's different no. that's, a totally that's different that's Carl's that's Carl's other body. Carl and I are actually also in that movie, but yeah, yeah, yeah. different. I was a boom mic operator in that one. <laughs> like I can't pay you guys much, but I do. I did secure the rights for you to play your own characters in the porno parody. So. <laughs> we actually made quite a bit of money from that. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, that's a yeah. different kind of plug, but <laughs> very prophetic. Because that was my next uh, question: is this is the the part of the episode where. Uh, plug away all you know everything every project that you're currently doing uh, that you in talking about this movie of course so we'll go around well, I've already room. got the gun so let the let the fellows go all right Jeremy oh I mean I wish that there was something I was doing um, I, I write music you can find my music online um, I also make things out of wood you can find my things out of wood online um, I'm a, wood thing. I'm a, I think uh, oh it's uh, Belle Shea woodwork but you can find me at Jeremy Kushner and go from there. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Carl Burry. Well, he has extremely good wood, so I just wanted to point, point that out. <laughs> Back Here. to the red tube. Oh, no, this is not the porno thing. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> not, you know, not. It's an I got offered a TV show right before COVID, so I got the offer at 8.30 in the morning on March the 13th. The deal closed on shutdown. So that's where that's been for the last uh, <laughs> ten months. That's that's been my life. So you know, fingers crossed for everything to you know return. Well, congratulations uh, in in the future, sir. <laughs> oh, you know, me. Thank you, <laughs> uh, Jason E. Alt. Thanks for uh, joining me on this endeavor. Where can everyone find you, sir? I am uh, Jason E. Alt on the Twitter, and in addition to both John and my Twitter bios, we will have every link that 
Jeremy, Serge, and Carl would like to provide to us in the YouTube description. So while you're checking out all their various projects, you can like and subscribe to our channel. And I will be uploading this in uh, podcast form also on all your favorite podcasting sites on iTunes, Spotify. Leave us, you know, bottles of scotch or, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to leave us. Just rate the damn thing and let people know that we're talking about films and we're talking with the people that make the films. Um, you can follow me at John the Host on Twitter or at Film Hooligans. Uh, sorry, at film underscore hooligans i've had some scotch tonight uh thank you so much uh to our special guests once again serge kushner jeremy kushner and carl berry thank you so much and we'll see you next time great thanks guys